Hey friends, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with another day of Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So as we're concluding this week of the Come Follow Me, uh, we still have Romans chapter 12 through 16. And there's some great things in here that I really think go well with this idea of putting off the natural man, like we've talked about. Remembering that in Mosiah 319, it talked about how you put off the natural man by becoming a saint, through the atonement of Jesus Christ. Now, what happens is in the Come Follow Me curriculum for this week, it gives a great statement. It says, Paul invites me to become a true saint and follower of Jesus Christ. Remembering that you put off the natural man by becoming a saint. The last five chapters of Romans contain dozens of specific instructions about living as saints. One way to study these instructions is just to look for topics that are repeated. If you've got a bunch of people in your family or your class, just give them some blocks of scripture and say, look for things that can be able to help people live better as saints. How would you summarize Paul's counsel? You may not be able to apply all of this counsel at once, but the Spirit can help you find one or two principles that you could start working on today. Share your desires with your Heavenly Father in prayer and ask for help. So what I wanted to do with you today is, in an effort to help us all put off the natural man, I want to take you to some of these, like it says, one or two principles from Romans 12 to 16, and see what you can find to help us become better saints. All you got to do, you look right to chapter 12. In fact, the chapter heading, it says, Paul counsels saints to present their bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, verses 1 and 2 talk about that. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, all the Old Testament sacrifices were dead. And here's where Paul says, I want you to present your body as a living sacrifice. Verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, when you're going back to some of those sacrifices, a lot of them are very sacramental in nature, in the sense that they remind us of the sacrament of our day. In fact, President Nelson several years ago said that the word sacrament, when you break it down into its Latin forms, means sacre and mentum, which means sacred mind. So here's Paul talking to us about renewing our mind through our own sacrifice. Now, what I have done is I've put a cross-reference here over to Omni, the great book of Omni in the Book of Mormon, where in verse number 26 it says, And now, my beloved brethren, I would that ye should come unto Christ, who is the Holy One of Israel, and partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption. Yea, come unto him and, like Paul said, offer your whole souls as an offering unto him, and continue in fasting and praying, and endure to the end. And as the Lord liveth, ye will be saved. Now, one of the things that when you're thinking about your own personal sacrifices, I love what Neil A. Maxwell, Elder Neil A. Maxwell years ago talked about this. He said, real personal sacrifice never was placing an animal on the altar. Instead, it is a willingness to put the animal in us upon the altar and letting it be consumed. The submission of one's own will is placing on God's altar the only uniquely personal thing one has to place there. The many other things we give are actually the things he has already given or loaned to us. And so this idea of presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, the world that we live in right now, in order to really become a saint, Paul really hits on some key elements, especially later on in this chapter. You go down to Romans 12 verse 18. If it be possible, and he's talking about how you interact with other individuals, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men, which I think is so cool. I mean, you think about what President Nelson taught us just in our last conference, peacemakers needed. And again, I've referred to that often. It's a landmark talk that everybody loves because that is one of the ways that we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, as we put off that contentious natural man and we live as a saint in a more peaceable type of thing. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And then you go down to that wonderful verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And how do you do that? You do that through living peaceably with all men. Now, in a similar vein, you go over to chapter 15. Again, there's so many different things you could do here. Chapter 15, you look at the chapter heading, true saints, fellowship one with another. You go to verses four and five, four, such a cool verse. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might find hope. Oftentimes the peace that we find in our lives and our abilities to then interact with other people comes from our interaction with the scriptures. 
that we can have that hope. And then verse five, now the God of patience and consolation, which we just talked about in that previous verse, grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Now that like-minded idea is so hard to do today is have everybody with the same mind one of the things I like here is the New Living Translation, which I refer to that often. It's one of my favorite versions of the scriptures. It says this, May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you to live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Jesus Christ. So that idea of like-mindedness is now thrown in there as harmony. And harmony is an interesting thing in musical terms. It, it doesn't just mean you're hitting the same note all the time. It means different individuals hit different notes, and in doing so, it sounds a lot better. Now, one last thought for you is you go over to chapter 16, and this is such a cool chapter, and on the surface, you're looking at it going, yeah, lists of names, you'll see where I'm going with this. The chapter heading says, Paul sends greetings to various saints. Now, he goes through and starts listing these individuals, which is so cool. Like in verse number one, he introduces us to Phoebe. Now, it calls her in verse number two, a succorer of many. How would you like to be known as someone who is helping and running to help many individuals, including Paul. Verse three, greet Priscilla and Aquila. Now these are the young church leaders, a married couple back in the book of Acts. He calls them my helpers in Christ Jesus. And I love verse four, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Like here's these individuals who did their best to be able to be saints, to be able to help me to be able to share the gospel with others. And apparently the church was formed in their home right there. And so these wonderful individuals were a great blessing to Paul's life. So as you go all the way through down to verse 15, you've got all of these individuals. And it's just kind of cool if you put in names of people you know who are just like this. Well, verses 17, 18, and 19, I think are extremely applicable applicable to our day. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. One of the cool things here, again, the New Living Translation. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. I think we all know people out there who have that as their goal to be able to just destroy that faith. Paul says, stay away from them. And this describes them so well. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Again, the New Living Translation. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord, but they are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Oh, we see people out there like that all the time. You go down to 19 and 20. Now 19, for your obedience Obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. The New Living Translation. But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing right and stay innocent of every wrong. And then what happens? Verse 20, the God of peace shall bruise, or the footnote says, crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So the God of peace is going to be the one who is going to help overcome Satan. So this whole idea of you and I overcoming that natural man and becoming a saint has largely to do with how peaceful we can be to others. Again, going back to our prophet, President Nelson, how well he shared that with us. I believe these principles are absolutely true and it's something that we can constantly work on to be better saints and overcome that natural man within us. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks as always for sharing. As always, we are so grateful that you do that. And of course, please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel-themed socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.